Black Trunks taking on Janae Ebanks in the blue. No touch of gloves, Josh. We get right down to business here at Cage Warriors 109. Yeah, and tying up very early here, this clinch, looking for the outside reap is Smith. And with the body lock, you've got to figure his judo background is going to make him tricky to deal with. There's the, there's the trip, just can't quite... Ah, well, gets it eventually, locked up in half guard here, maintains that body lock on the way down. You know, Ebanks as an amateur was known for his wrestling game. He really was able to put it on people and crush them. But, you know, this is where we saw him struggle against Stanton from that bottom position. Yeah, and, and you know what? The wrestling's different when it comes up against the cage. You know, you're inherently standing a lot more upright, which brings it much more into the realm of the judoka. You know, a more free wrestling phase, the hips are further back, different skill set. Looks like Ebanks is already trying to attack the wrist of George Smith there on the far side. Yeah, and he's sitting up actually really well on his hip here to try and get over the top. He's got to be careful not to get wrapped up through, and I think Smith might have that cross wrist grip. Yes, he does. Bad spot for Janae Ebanks yeah, here. He's got to move. Smith panning away. Ebanks looking to hide his head there. Not in any immediate danger, but he's going to have to improve his position before too long. He managed to build his base back up, but it tells you the quality of that wrist grip. That, that Smith had, and you see immediately, look at that, strips it straight back into position. They try and just drag him down to the mat here. And this is a lot of weight for Ebanks to, to carry this early in the fight. Yeah, he's got a very typical judo player's build, and obviously he's integrated the judo into the mixed martial arts game. We've seen a lot of clinch work and trips already from George Smith in his young career. Yeah, again, you see, looking to pull the, pull the foot out. I mean, so much of, of trips, particularly in judo, is, is a timing element. You know, when is the guy transferring his weight from one foot to the other? If you can time it, it inherently makes the sweep easier. And that's a that's a really nice uh, bit of internalized knowledge for him to bring over. Former Cage Warriors champion Alex Anlund in the corner of George Smith. Former Cage Warriors title challenger Matt Inman also in the corner. And Admiral Chowdhury, a great fighter in his own right coming out of SBG, so a very strong corner team for George Smith there. Smith doing a really good job of weighing heavy. He looked as though he was almost going to try and roll the shoulder over for uh, a back take, but, you know, his wrist grips here are so strong. See how he strips it back inside. It forces the elbow position uh, out of out of line for Ebanks, and it makes him sort of tilt forward more than he would otherwise. Nice knees to the body there from George Smith. I mean, he's just wearing on him. I mean, Ebanks has got to find a way out here. And every Another time he, big knee to the ribs there. Every time he builds his base back up, Smith just knocks him back down. And again, looking to trip that leg out, really not giving Ebanks even a moment's respite here. It is a really unusual trip to put the guy back down. We don't often see it. A lot of times people try and transition to the back here. They'll try and sink a hook into the back of the kneecap, maybe drag them down, or they'll, they'll pick up for a big mat return. This is a really cheeky little trip. Again, just hooking the leg out from underneath Ebanks there. 90 seconds left in the round, plenty of time here for George Smith to put this one to bed if Ebanks can't find a way out of this position. I mean, sure, he's, he's not causing an awful lot of damage, but you can't really ask for a more controlling and better start to this match if you're, if you're George Smith. Looking to grab the single leg there as he turns is Ebanks. Yeah, he, he hasn't got to worry about his neck too much because George Smith has got two underhook grips, so there's no way he's whipping the hands up quickly to the net. Uh, he's just going to be careful not to, to give his back too easily. He's actually looking to secure the grip now. This gets tiring trying to hold a leg up here. And one big stamp to the floor from, uh, from Smith, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on that grip. Ebanks just briefly adjusting the grip there, tried to attack both legs, but again flattened out by George Smith. See, Ebanks could never turn and square his body up to actually generate power into that move. It was all arms because the underhooks that Smith had were keeping him at this, this acute angle. Slapping hammer fist there from Smith, echoed out here in the Resort World Arena. The wrist control for me. Like the wrist control is just doing everything for him here. Years of gripping that lapel on the gi. Twenty seconds left in the round, and it's going to be a case of hanging on here for Janae Ebanks and the corner team, Steve Nightingale, Jordan Chester, both experienced competitors in their own right.
are going to have uh, a lot of work to do and some serious words here with Janae e. Banks going into the second round, Josh. Yeah, the, the questions the judges have to be asking off that round is, was that enough to warrant a 10-8? You know, was there sufficient impact on top of the, the control um, to really warrant giving a 10-8? I mean, there was very little offense coming back, uh, you know, from Ebanks during that bout, so I, I could see someone being swinged that way. Well, let's take a look back at some of the action from that first round. Immediately closes the distance there to Smith and then already attacking the legs, George. Yeah, he fought his way in nicely over under clinch, usually a bit of a 50-50 position, but obviously if, if you've got a, a lifetime of gripping in over under position standing up, you've got a bit of an advantage and he just maintained this position so well. He actually did a good job of getting on his hip, but uh, once he was forced to turtle, he did not have an answer for that position. And we saw the sporadic burst of shots here in there. Tough to see, was it a hammer fist? No, it was an elbow strike. And he gripped the wrist there, completely leaving the area of attack open. Junaid Ebanks not able to do anything about that shot as it came down. Yeah, and the one wrist. of certainly the uh, most audibly damaging shots of the round there. Yeah, the wrist grip, uh, you know, that, that dealt a real big blow to Ebanks there. And oh, gave up a body lock quickly. We saw Ebanks looking to close the distance there, came in with a big overhand. Smith, though, standing resolute and immediately gets the trip takedown. It's just a different skill set to prepare for and one that is hard to prepare for, you know? It's, it's a, an elite level in any specialist sport is just a different challenge. And uh, judo is one where, you know, you, you probably don't face too many elite level judokas all that often in this context. Looking to attack. With a Kimura grip, perhaps, is Smith in this top position, trying to isolate the arm. It's exactly what he's doing. If he can push it down towards the hip, it'll be a Kimura, up will be an Americana. There's the, the figure four wrist lock grip. He can connect his hands together. Ebank's going to be trying to keep that safe glued to his own hip. Early 2018, the last time Ebanks was stopped in competition anyway, that was a submission via armbar. See what Ebanks is doing with his right hand here. That's that's almost a more interesting grip, whether he's trying to be active with it or whether it's pinned by Smith. I actually can't tell. Well, he could go deep half here, but, but that means he really does have to protect against the Kimura. This is this is perfectly possible for Smith to finish this with the leg still trapped. Oh, he's <laughs> it's interesting. Matt Inman was shouting, switch that grip for an underhook so he can flatten him out in half guard. Smith looked at him and shook his head. <laughs> Always good to have an exchange of ideas. Oh, oh good bridge, but uh, that gave the guard pass. Well, Ebanks has been known for you know, that explosive movement and power, but against the Judoka of George Smith's level, just not working for him there. So it's just a case of being against somebody who knows that's something you're going to do. You know, if you can anticipate that bridge, you can use it to free your leg, which is exactly what Smith did. And he wasted no time going about. I love the intent to progress immediately. We saw World Arena filling up here tonight for Cage Warriors 109. Oh, that's good work. He needed to get out of there quickly. He couldn't waste too much more time down there. Leg entry coming. He's done a good job, but oh, he's just lost the grip. And again, a bad spot for Ebanks to be in. The option was there. He just never got enough of a frame and a push into the midsection to pull the leg through and knock Smith off balance. And unfortunately for Ebanks, this is where he spent nearly the entirety of that first round. And there's a big crowd in from Halifax, it seems, for George Smith. Cheers ringing out through the Resort World Arena here. It has to be said, Josh Smith not looking troubled thus far in this contest whatsoever. No, very calm, very composed, has, has an answer for everything. Um, you know, at some point I want to see him put under some duress and see how he reacts, but right now he's having it all his own way. So you can tell he's so heavy in this position. I and mean, it's one thing to say, okay, Ebanks has got to build his base back up and, and try and scramble back to his feet, but he's just being worn on here. 
It's certainly a lot easier said than done in this case. And Smith right in front of the SPG corner. Talking about some of the top coaches in the in the UK scene today, Matt Inman and Alex Edmund have got to be up there at the top of that list. The Ebanks has got to come up with a solution for this trip, but it, it, it's going to be very tough for him to make that decision in match. You know, he's got to keep the space between his elbow and his knee closed as he builds back. Um, from this side, it means he's got to build his left leg up first and then try and use that cage to help support him. I think every time he builds this right leg up, he just gets it stripped away. So he's got to use the, uh, the, the leg that's a bit better protected on the other side. And it must be mentally demoralizing for Ebanks in this position as well. All he can hear is Smith's corner barking instructions at him. And, uh, yeah, from, from two feet away at this point as well. I mean, look, he's got he's got a lot of mat time. And, and, you know, he's, he's going to have seen this before, but right now he's two rounds down and, and you know, he's going to need a finish going into this third round. Yeah, Smith looking for a big knee to the head there. And let's see if Ebanks can do something with this last 10 seconds. Well, could pick up a high crotch here, but it's going to be a waste of energy. Oh, looking for the Kimura roll through there. And the fluidity of movement from George Smith displayed so clearly towards the end of that round. He was able to transition with the Kimura, immediately let go and drop that elbow in. Yeah, so it, that single leg defense at the end was, was really nice. Had a lot of time to set it up, but as you say, it's the fluidity, you know, he's weighing heavy because there's there's no stutter step, you know, there's no disconnect, reconnect, it's con constantly contacted. Let's take a look at some of the action here, and it was Ebanks moving forward behind the big looping left, but as soon as George Smith got the grip around the waist, that was all she wrote in terms of the standard portion of that round. Yeah, you can't, you can't walk into double unders there and not expect uh, that bend in your spine. Well, I believe this is where we had the uh, exchange of ideas with the uh, <laughs> with the corner team. No, I don't think I want that underhook. I think I'll beat on him a bit more here. Ebanks e looking to power through there, but so resolute from top position was George Smith. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you can't maintain a half guard and bridge at the same time by virtue of the fact you have to put, a, you know, your feet on the floor to bridge. Um, so that's a pretty common scenario you see in, in the half guard escape and, and pass. Well, Ebanks certainly making Smith earn this one. Yeah, he's got to keep some distance. He can't let him connect up a body easily. He has done early here. Oh, and that's, yeah, just capitulating a little bit too easily there. Smith knee on belly here. Terrible, terrible position for Ebanks to be in I mean, early was, in the round. Yeah, he landed in an almost completed pass already, and that windshield wiper through, through to keep the knee on belly was pretty easy for him. Plenty more prelim action coming your way here on the UFC Fight Pass. Cage Warriors 109, the main card coming up in just over an hour's time, live here from the Resort World Arena in Birmingham, UK. And what a main card we have got for you. Evax has got to get up, get up, but he's got to do it without, I was going to say, giving up this position, which is, is where he's had a lot of trouble so far. Got to, build that, got to build that left leg up here. And there really hasn't been any wasted control time from George Smith. He's constantly been looking to drop an elbow, drop a short hammer fist, or the big knees to the body when he's had control of the back like this. An absolutely torrid time he's put on Janady Banks. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. It, it's, it's nothing's wasted, you know, he is constantly working. And it's so nice to see a fighter who's in an offensive position do that. Uh, you know, he's not chilling out, he's not burning time, everything is everything is working. Settling into a Kezagatami here. Back to a knees upside control. Maintaining that top underhook, that far, his right arm all the way underneath the whole time. Staying glued. He backs again, trying to get his hip to the mat there. And, uh, two on one, straight to the wrist. He's just... He's basically just picking a post every time Ebanks tries to get back up and stripping it, whether it's the foot or the or the hand. Now, as long as he can control two of those posts, Ebanks is never getting back to his feet. So the wrist is one post, and every time he builds a foot, he sweeps that foot out. You know, it's like trying to have a, a chair with three, with you know, two legs or even three. It's hard to stand up. And again, looking to scramble back to his feet here is Ebanks Smith riding very heavy. 
on that top position again looks to trip the leg yeah he's, he's weighing so heavy on the shoulders just keeping the posture broken the whole time never allowing him to get straight back which is where you need to generate the power and you've got to feel three back so he's fighting him every step of the way each time he is but you see trying to go on this single when that left underhook is there he's just never going to be able to turn his body and actually attach properly This is what we said, right? Evans is not going to go away quietly in the first round. This was, it, was, it was unlikely this was going to be a quick stoppage win for George Smith. He was going to have to grind one out. Oh, puts Evan to his back, switches around, takes the back again. There's George Smith. Total control here from the SBG fighter. I don't think we're going to see anything change in the next minute and a half. I think he's going to constantly strip that post. Keep him worn down. Just keep working. This is the thing we've seen so many times, Joshua. A fight have a dominant wrestling performance, give it their all, and the last two minutes they've got nothing left. And, we, and we've seen these miracle comebacks. But George Smith doesn't look like he's struggling for breath. Eh? He doesn't look like he's struggling for energy. Looks as fit now as he did at the end of the first round. Yeah, and the smart thing for him at this point is not to take any unnecessary risks. Everyone likes having a big finish. You know, they don't necessarily like going to the judges, but, you know, he, he needs the cage time. He need, at this point in his career, he just needs the experience and to show that composure. And this is what he's doing. He's got to defend a Kimura here, but Ebanks is going to have a tough time finishing it unless he can really separate the, the grip. It's going to have to be a Hail Mary or nothing from Junaid Ebanks at this point. Firmly ahead on the judges' scorecards, and you're, you're even perhaps looking at 10 8 territory in a couple of these rounds, Josh, the grappling being so dominant. Yeah, it's not that he doesn't have a chance here, though. If he's got this figure four grip locked up, which it looks like he does, uh, the problem is it, it, it's I'm kind of, you know, it requires Smith to release his grip, and I don't think that's going to happen somehow. Smith's still trying to find a gap I mean, for those knees to the body. It's unreal to be defending a Kimura in this position and still think, no, I'm going to hit you a bit more. And I want the stumble. Okay, well, it's not coming, is it? It's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're having a the chat with each other. <laughs> didn't, didn't entirely catch everything that they had to say there, but you've got to love the sportsmanship. Oh. Let's take a look at the uh, the takedown here in the third and final round. Yeah, Just poke the leg out and... Another pulse of these men straight to the canvas. Yeah, another quick read. Those upper body takedowns coming in from the judo. And again, just riding that back control in that turtle position. Sat him down with the hip a few times. Let's take a look at the corner team here for George Smith. A very happy Alex Enland. A very happy Matt Inman there, but he never cracks a smile <laughs> that man. Regardless, an SBG corner team, she's going to be very happy with George Smith's performance as they take to the gym on Monday morning, no doubt, to look over this one. Really, aren't going to be many complaints, surely? No, I don't think there can be. Uh, you know, I think uh, the only thing you could say is, hey, look for the finish a bit more. <laughs> but I mean, or maybe try and work out how we can generate a bit more power into some of those shots in some of those positions. But I mean, I'm, you know, button and straws for complaints there. It's uh, about as dominant and controlling game plan as you want. And you know, Ebanks e has gone through his last three fights, so nine rounds without being finished. He's, as we said, not there for the taking, this guy. He's a tough customer. Credit to George Smith for getting it done in sublime fashion as we throw this one to our MC in the cage to make it official, Mr. Al Chaplin. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to our judges' scorecards. Your judges have scored this bout 30-25, 30-25, 30-26. Declaring your winner by way of unanimous decision in the blue corner, George Smith! George Smith.